Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to a public meeting of the City of Lowe's Board of Appeals for July 9th, 2018. Um, just a few housekeeping matters. If you plan on speaking on behalf of a petition, um, please sign your name and address um, on the podium. And um, if you have a cell phone, uh, please turn it off or turn it on silent or vibrate. Um, first order of business, continued business is none. Um, we'll go right into new business. Uh, CB-2018-19, a variance. The applicant is Richard and Anna Pratt. The property is located at 27 Chatham Street. Um, the applicant is seeking dimensional variance approval of the construction of a two-car garage with a second floor art studio that exceeds the height requirement at 27 Chatham Street, the applicant is seeking variance approval under section 4.4.1 of the Lowell Zone Ordinance. The parcel comprises approximately 7,000 square feet of land area and is located in the traditional single family zoning district. Um, so we got confirmation that um, this petition will actually um, not be here tonight and we will um, continue it to our next meeting on July 23rd. Is that correct, Mr. Burns? Yes. All right. Um, so it's okay with the board. Can we have a motion to continue this uh, petition to July 23rd meeting? Three, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion for ZB 2018-19 to be continued to July 23rd. Can I get a second, please? Second. Second. All right, uh, roll call, please. Uh, Member Peck. Uh, approved continuance. Member Callahan. Continue to July 23rd. Member McCarthy. Continue to July 23rd. Member Breer. Approved continuance. And Member Jamina. Approved continuance. All right, that matter is approved. Uh, continue to July 23rd. Um, next item on the docket, uh, ZB-2018-22. Uh, the petition is a variance. The applicant is Lenny D'Souza, uh, property located at 256 Trouting Park Road. Um, the applicant is seeking a request for relief from the Zoning Board of Appeals to construct a new single family home at 256 Trouting Park Road. The parcel is located in the suburban neighborhood single family zoning district and requires variance under section 5.1 table of dimensional regulations for minimum lot frontage and for any other relief required under the low zoning ordinance. Uh, good evening, Mr. Hammer. Good evening. Uh, Chairman and uh, members of the board, for the record, my name is Matt Hammer with Lamplex Engineering and Surveying. I'm here this evening on behalf of um, Lenny D'Souza, uh, who currently lives um, in the lot right here. Um, they've lived there for over 20 years. And um, Lenny wants to build a new house on a piece of property that he owns back here which is 65,100 square feet. Um, the property is off of Trotting Park Road, and this is the uh, subdivision plan, which I wanted to show the board first. And that was the creation of the lots, um, which are here, and then there were rear lots created. You go down, there's a few more lots, then there's rear lots created few more lots and then there's rear lots created and there's even more a couple more um, uh, back to the south on Trotting Park. Um, historically, um, I uh, provided a handout which is an overview GIS map. And on that GIS map, you'll see a bold red, which is the lot that we're uh, 
seeking a variance on. And then you'll see other red parcels outlined. So on this map, this GIS map, these homes are shown in yellow. Here, here, here. This one's empty, which is our lot. And there's four more lots that have been issued building permits that have the same uh, amount of frontage as we do. And they're essentially these lots that show up on this subdivision plan. Uh, doing some research on those lots, they were all issued building permits um, without the need of a variance. Um, and Jared um, Elves' letter, he lists those lots. Um, it's 298 Trotting Park Road, 302 Trotting Park Road. 324 Trotting Park Road, 326 Trotting Park Road, and they were built either in the late 70s or early 1980s. And all of those lots either had 24 through 24, seven, 20, or 27 feet of frontage, which is, a, which is essentially these lots that are shown on the subdivision plan. So they were actually uh, issued building permits where the frontage was 70 feet at that time, but did not need to go through the Zoning Board of Appeals for whatever reason. We haven't been able to figure that out, even going through the uh, building depar inspection department's files. So I think that's important to note that essentially we're the same style of lot, um, represent representing the same conditions of this right-of-way that was provided to access each lot. And I think because they all had right-of-ways that they were essentially considered a buildable lot at the time. It must have been the building department's determination to just go straight to a building permit. What we are proposing to do is shift the lot line that would have had the house closer to the wetlands. So we shifted the lot line here in order to create a, still maintain a conforming lot for the existing home. So that we could propose a house here with the driveway and have it meet all the requirements from the uh, Local Conservation Commission. The Local uh, Conservation Commission unanimously approved this plan uh, last week. Um, so they thought the house was well placed, the driveway, we're providing drainage, and um, we're providing everything beyond what they have as a, they like to maintain a 50 foot buffer off the rear lot line. We're here granting, to be granted a variance by not having enough frontage. Uh, and then not enough lot width. And the lot width is something that we'll take care of with the planning board. But the, um, we'll also need to go back to the planning board because 90 feet is required for a lot. You're allowed a 15 foot reduction by special permit. And we'll go, we're, we have an application to the planning board to, for a special permit to have 75 feet having the house meet all the requirements, um, it, being able to reduce down from the 90 feet. This is the proposed house. It's gonna be a modest home. It's gonna be a, um, a split level home, which is indicative of most of the homes along, a good amount of homes along that area. So we're not building an, uh, an incredibly big house here. Uh, it's going to be approximately uh, 1,800 square foot home. And it's going to have, you know, just a simple floor plan to that home for that style. Uh, we feel as though we do have a hardship in the way that um, 
you know, we do have uh, wetlands on the property that restrict the location of the home. Um, we, figure, we, we feel as though we have a hardship because of the lot shape uh, and the way that the lot was created. Um, that, you know, has us to this point before the Zoning Board of Appeals where the other homes on that street did not have to go through the Zoning Board of Appeals in order to site a house. Um, and I can answer any questions from the board. Um, thank you, Ms. Hammer, for that uh, detailed presentation. Um, now we're just gonna open up um, the meeting to the public, uh, see if there are any questions or comments. Uh, anyone here wishing to um, speak in opposition? In opposition? All right, hearing none, that portion of the public hearings closed. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of this petition? In favor? In favor? Um, seeing none, that portion of the public hearing is closed. Um, can open up the comments to the board. Uh, the chair recognizes uh, Mr. Jimena. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, well, I had the privilege to go by the place this afternoon. Um, I believe it's, uh, it's a nice place. Um, I was just a little concerned about the access road there. Um, so how, how are you going to do about it? Do you, are you going to, um, so are you, don't you think you're not encroach on your neighbor's, um, land, the access road? Yes, that's correct. Um, if you notice when you're out there, it, it, it gently slopes to the rear and that there's a little bit of grading on either side of that area on the left. So we're able to get the proposed driveway installed without encroaching on the abutters property. Okay. And um, I don't know if I was clear, but we're also providing some mitigating drainage along the left hand side so that no runoff will go onto the neighbor's property and also at the end of the uh, driveway itself. And the, and the driveway itself is 12 feet wide. Good, all right. Well, that's, that's all I have on block. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, thank you, Mr. Jimena. Uh, the chair recognizes uh, Mr. Breer. I think the home fits neatly, neatly in the lot. And I think it's entirely consistent with the character of the neighborhood. So I wish Mr. D'Souza the very best in his construction. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Spear. Uh, the chair recognizes Mr. McCarthy. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just have a couple of questions, but uh, before we do, uh, Patrick, um, it does seem a little strange that the other lots didn't need um, any approvals back in 80 or 79, whenever it was built. Um, and so there's six lots here total, two still that haven't been built on, this one being one of them, um, which kind of makes it odd that we'd have a, a approval required for this one, or was it just that it was overlooked when the other four were granted? Yeah, I mean, I can't say for certain, as uh, Mr. Hammer said, it was in the late 70s, early 80s. I looked in the building permit file history myself, um, and did see the building permits, and unfortunately there was no reference of any, you know, land use board um, process. Okay. Um, I'm, not, I'm not really sure why there wasn't one. And then the right of way, um, sort of, in, in the other situations was, um, it seemed like the drive was centered on the two right of ways, so that uh, the right of, the, the access drive for the other properties is just one access drive servicing two lots, um, which is not being proposed this time. No. Which there was, I'm kind of- there is, Sorry, Mr. McCarthy. Which I'm not sure why, so, so in the past, when the others were built, it seems as though the right of way for each lot was sort of um, used as more buffer space between the neighboring lots so that the access drive was sort of down the middle. And so you had maybe a 12 or 15 foot access drive on the property line, providing more of a buffer. 
And I know that that's not what we're doing this time. I just don't know. Was that a requirement maybe back in 79 <laughs> or 80? Or I, is there any history to I, that? I think I can. Maybe. Great. If you could. You know, so two homes do access by one driveway. Yep. Which is fine. <laughs> but they didn't get a common driveway special permit to do that. But that's fine. Um, another configuration went so far as to, to utilize the full right-of-way on both of the lots and actually create an additional lot at the end, which was surprising. It's, um, oh, sure, sure. Um, like, almost like a cul-de-sac, but a private cul-de-sac kind of thing. Yeah, not that I was formally in land use in 1980, um, but in 1980, it, things were different. Um, you know, they, they were able to create an additional lot, even though that was never the intent when the subdivision was originally created. So that was being creative <laughs> by the land surveyor at the time to do that. Um, and then you'll notice on the adjacent parcel to this is owned by the city of Lowell. Right. Yeah. And um, that lot actually is going to be pretty restricting to do anything on it because the wetland comes back so far on that side that I don't know if it's going to be realistic that someone would be able to build a home there unless they did something similar to what we're doing, which is taking that rear lot line and shifting it down so that you can appropriately site a house there. But, but they seem even more constrained than you with yeah. the uh, wetlands encroaching on that even further than what it does on uh, your lot. To some well, they, they don't own the other parcel. Okay, right, right, right. And they don't own the other parcel as well, sure. Right. right. Um, so it does seem as though that one won't be developed, but... Um, there's no restrictions on the other lot other than what currently stands as far as the uh, frontage requirement. The parcel owned by the city? Yes. Um, yeah, as far as I know, there's no like easement or restriction okay. um, like recorded or anything like that, but there are the wetlands on there. That's pretty if, if I could add, Mr. McCarthy, um, this situation would be similar to what, would, uh, what a paper street yeah. would look like or a right-of-way where... The right-of-way is, in our case, 50 feet wide. So if somebody wanted to build a full street, they could, but it also provides individual access by way of drives on, e on half of the, the right-of-way, mm -hmm. which is what, this isn't exactly that, but they set it up as two separate right-of-ways. And if you'll notice on the, the subdivision plan, they, they, they make note that it could be you know, uh, improved as a full roadway to benefit both lots in the back if, if, if both property owners chose to do that. Okay. Um, you show a, a, a landscape plan, kind of, where you're showing, is that existing trees? Yeah. That you're maintaining? So that's, that's essentially uh, Lenny's backyard, where there's a number of ornamental trees. Um, the trees came up uh, during the discussion with the Conservation Commission and we had expressed to the Conservation Commission that we feel as though we're going to be able to save most of those trees that are there and they're trees that you know they're um, ornamental trees so they're nice trees that that uh, Mr. D'Souza had planted years ago and we feel as though we'll be able to keep six of the eight of those That's trees. Great. Yeah. That's wonderful. I, I think you've done a nice job fitting this in. Um, I think it's rather inventive to try to um, move that property line and still maintain a usable lot on that front parcel lot. I guess it's uh, lot 12B. And um, it fits in. <laughs> so um, I, th I think you've done that. I, I just was kind of worried about what happened to that City of Lowell lot, but it does seem like it's uh, pretty shaky with the uh, uh, encroachment on the wetlands that you have on that lot, especially not owning that lot in the front. So that's for the no further questions. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. McCarthy. Um, the chair recognizes Mr. Callahan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Through you, uh, uh, you mentioned 
Mr. Hammer, that uh, you got to go before the planning board um, for a 15 foot reduction. Um, I mean, Patrick, is it if we grant relief today, is that, there going to be any effect on that if the planning board somehow finds that they shouldn't be granted the extra 15 feet of relief, or is this something? I mean, I'm trying to figure out. Uh, so I guess you know your decision wouldn't affect theirs. Um, so if you approved it and they didn't, it wouldn't. The project couldn't go on. But they're two separate. Okay. Uh, no, I just was kind of curious when you mentioned that. I didn't know if that was gonna. Yeah, we're not touching the frontage. We're gonna leave the frontage as it is. But because I'm taking the rear lot line and shifting it down, yeah. I I then have to make that a conforming lot. And I'm not a conforming lot if I don't have the 90 feet. So I have to, I have to seek relief of that 15 foot reduction by special permit by the planning board, which allows me to go to 75. Yeah, gotcha. When did this lot go into existence? Do you do you know? Or because I mean, the reason really I'm asking, I'm looking at 5.2.9 for frontage, um, the larger lots that are 20,000 that are minimum 20,000 square feet, and it says you can reduce the just by. By rule, you can reduce that to 40 feet of frontage, but it has to be in existence at the time of the effective date of the zoning ordinance, and I just want to, I mean, you're still going to need the relief either way, but I'm just trying to figure out the minimum, how you can minimize that. If you're at 40 feet, 15 feet minimal, minimize, you, it's not that bad. You're looking for 65, 65 feet in relief? So. Yes, 64.99. I mean, it's not going to make it either way. You still need the re you still need the relief either way. I'm just right. I was just I just caught my eye it when I was looking created, at it. It was created in uh, April 3rd of 79. Okay, so that was before the. I effect. mean, I'm sorry, 97. 97, so well before the effect. Well, well after oh, no. the effect. <laughs> um, he bought Mr. D'Souza bought it in 97. Okay. The lot was created in uh, 79. 79. Okay, so it's well after the effective date of. Of a zoning regulation, so I was just kind of curious about that. Um, but uh, yeah, either way, that being the case, I mean, uh, I think uh, this makes sense that the uh, many of the lots in the area are in similar in nature. They've already been built upon, and whether somehow they got by without zoning back then, I mean, it is what it is. So, but uh, um, I, there's been no other op nobody appeared in opposition. So uh, it's again very well maintained. Great plan and uh, very good presentation, Mr. Hammer, and I wish you the best of luck. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Callahan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Callahan. Um, you know, I, I heard the comments from my board members, and, and I'm in agreement. You know, um, it, it is a lot um, that is well maintained, and I think um, um, this petition can be approved. Um, it's, you know, it's on a wetland, but, you know, we did hear from your presentation that conservation approved um, all the plans. and. Uh, you know, they, they can be really uh, particular with things. Um, you know, it is an, it's an oddly shaped kind of lot, too, as well. Um, you know, I had some of the concerns, um, like Mr. McCarthy and, and Mr. Callahan, with the other surrounding laws and how they got approval and um, the records with those um, petitions. But um, I think, I think um, you, you meet the burden of uh, the variance, in my opinion. Um, so with that being said, um, there's, there's no conditions from any of the, any of the members? Okay. So with that being said, um, can I get a motion uh, to approve this petition? Three, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion for ZB 2018-22 for variance for Lenny D'Souza at 256 Charting Park Road. Um, the relief is for the construction of a new single family home on a lot that'll have a non-conforming frontage reduced from 90 feet required to 25 feet. Can I get a second on the motion, please? Second. Uh, thank you, Mr. Breer. Uh, roll call. Chairman Beck? Uh, approve. Member Callahan? Approved. Member McCarthy? Approve. Member Breer? Approval. Member Demina? Uh, approve. Thank you so much. All right, you've been I really approved. appreciate it. Uh, best of luck to you, Mr. Hamber, Mr. D'Souza. In other business, um, there is none. Um, 
I know we have um, the minutes for approval, and that's that'll be for the next meeting, right, Mr. Burns, from the last meeting? Yeah, it was the May 9th meeting minutes. I know you sent just recently sent an email about minutes, and I June 25th, I believe. Yeah, the June 25th okay. meeting. Yeah, they don't. Look, I guess they weren't put on this agenda, but next for next meeting they'll be put on. Yeah, for approval, and um, we'll make that change as you noted. Thank, thank you, Mr. Burns. Um, any other comments to the minutes from the the uh, June 25th meeting that anyone wants to comment on? None. Okay. Um, seeing no other business, um, can I get a motion to adjourn? I actually do have a small comment. Um, um, go ahead, Mr. Burns. Apparently, based on yesterday, or sorry, last week's meeting, last time's meeting um, about 201 Coburn, um, the proponents have been active in trying to schedule a meeting um, to address the concerns brought up. Um, I was informed that they are intent to schedule a meeting for this coming Wednesday at 6 p.m. Um, and it's going to be at the site, 201 Coburn Street, the church. Great. That's, that's great to hear. And, and we're all invited. Yes. All interested are invited. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I encourage if any of the members have um, availability to attend. Um, I plan on attending as well. And I will also reach out to um, the chairman to see if he can fit in, in his schedule as well. All right. Any other comments or discussions by anybody? All right, seeing none, um, can I have a motion to adjourn, please? Three, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Um, anyone second the motion? I second it. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. All right, ayes have it. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you, and have a good night. <laughs>